I'm about to speak to Molly Price, who is the founder of Molly Meg. Now, anyone who knows Molly Meg will know it's one of those Instagram accounts that is glorious. I can't wait to speak to Molly about not only her talent in curating children's products, but also her emporium, her children's emporium, which is her shop in London. Because for anyone who has owned a shop during this period of time, it has just been breathtakingly difficult to close the doors, but also quite remarkable to reopen them. So I can't wait to talk to her about what her experience has been and also maybe get some key photography tips because this is a woman who knows what she's doing. Hi. Hi Holly. How are you? How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, thank you. I was just saying that you're one of these women that I look to in industry because you've got this eye, an eye that can't be bought. It's sort of Definitely, I'm sure you were born with it, where when I look at what you touch and what you buy, it's unbelievable. So I just thought I'd make you blush from the offset of this interview. <laughs> how, so tell me, um, how have you been? Because um, we're going to talk about your shop and how you felt through COVID and all of this. But how have you personally been through this period of time? Uh, I think. I mean, it's been an adjustment and it's been a crazy time, I think. Um, but I've been all right. I've kept busy. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm quite, like, at my sort of world is quite small in terms of I live very near the shop. Um, I've got sort of family and friends quite close by. So the world sort of shrunk to me quite a lot. But I've been getting, getting on with it. And I've been okay. Getting on with it. Yeah. And how have you found when we when I've been talking to people? So there's sort of there's two strain, strains of thoughts. I shouldn't talk about strains of anything um, in a pandemic. There's been two types of thinking. One has been this has been brilliant for my creativity, and another has been actually it's been a disaster. What's it been for you? Um, it's given me some thinking space. So yeah, closing the shop gave me a bit of distance because um like I started online and I did online for five years um and then when I opened the shop it was a bit of a shock to the system because it's such a different thing and it's such a lot so actually it was the first time because we were open seven days a week so it was the first time I was actually in the shop without anyone being there yes so I trashed trashed the place but that was all good <laughs> um yeah so it's uh in that sense, that's been really good. So I've had a bit of a chance to reflect, but it's also been like I was flat out because, um, so when we closed, uh, the, it, we're a really small team. There's like three of us, two girls that work part time with me. Um, and they stayed, they decided to stay. They weren't comfortable coming in. So it was me and a friend that sort of hit the ground running. Um, so I didn't get, Although I've had a chance to reflect, I didn't get any time. So it wasn't like we were sort of there seven days a week, um, which was great. So it was getting, I had these ideas that I'd paint the shop and I'd do this stuff. Yeah, you all had, you had the romantic ideas yeah. of, of, of lockdown. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I didn't do any of that. But, um, but I think it's, I think it's been a really, like, there's a lot of positive things have come out of it. Um, and it's obviously what's been your main positive that's come out of it um i think just having a bit of separation space um yes and, and also having to think on your feet and adapt to what's happened and actually like it's part of it was a bit exciting because you had to think of you know like think of ideas and things you can do a bit be a bit more creative and i felt more like because a lot of the time I end up working from home because um, when there's customers in the shop, it's hard to get stuff done. But I was just there every day and I actually really enjoyed being back sort of at the root. Amongst, amongst your shop. And I don't know about you because I remember, you know, you know we, we looked back, I remember um, when we heard from Boris and it was sort of, we were shutting down. And I remember making that decision and it's probably been the only time I've, cried during lockdown which is it was 
us, anyone who has a shop, um, and I was just saying, I was just interviewing Lucy and Yak, but, and their shop in Brighton, and you know, anyone has a shop, it's really an extension of yourself. So you yeah. spend so long, don't you, trying to keep it open, and then you have to close it, which is absolutely against everything that you have been trying to do. How was this period of time for you when you, you closed the store? We, we, I, I decided a couple of days before they sort of said we had to. I just, it just suddenly felt a bit uncomfortable and yeah. it didn't feel right to be open. Um, so it was actually my birthday, the shutters broke up shop and, um, oh. and then I just, I was like, you know what, I think it's time. So we just closed and it was, um, yeah, it, I felt, anxious and um apprehensive but i kind of it's the only time in my lifetime that something's happened that affects absolutely everybody you know mm. and there was something mm. in that that you're like well you just you just need to you know like everybody's in a similar you know they're in a boat of some sort that's all connected and we're all trying to figure it out and um you just sort of need to get on with it you know like just think um so um a couple a few days before we closed uh the schools were about to shut and then i saw loads of arts and crafts stuff and then we do workshops and that's kind of a big part and passion of mine um and so i sent an email like a mailing list email and i don't do them that often but i i did one and i just said oh you know the school's closing we've got loads of well, anyway, I put all this up, sort of arts and crafts stuff, things to do at home. And um, and the orders just, it just went, it, it, it went a bit crazy. And it was such a boost because I was feeling quite anxious. And me and Nikki that I work with, we, we hadn't closed yet. And I was like, oh my God, the orders just keep coming. And it was just, that was a real boost to morale and kind of like, yes. You know, like, and it, it, it gave me a bit of confidence and, and it was a real motivator that actually, you know what, we can, we can try and think of stuff to still keep, keep going. To keep going. Yeah. So that was really sort of motivating and, um, and then uh, I think I just sort of tried to think of things, you know, like the post, the postal system was quite uncertain. So I said, you know, local deliveries in Islington and Hackney where we are. I got in my car and I just drove and dropped them off um, or I walked. It was quite nice, our daily walk. <laughs> I had like, somewhere I could go. Uh, so that, and that worked really well. And then people that were, you know, we said that anybody wants to send a gift to somebody, it's not set up on the, or well it is now, but it wasn't set up on the website that you could put a gift message. Send it to a recipient, it. yeah. So I just said, you know, if you want anything back, drop us an email, reply to the order confirmation and tell us what you want to say and, you know, the details. Um, and that that worked really well because people were able to send birthday presents or people that, you know, grandparents, like all different sort of, um, yeah, people responded well. So we sent a lot of presents and we got nice messages and, you know, like it was, that felt like, it, it felt really good and people were really happy to have that. It's sort. been, it's, it's been interesting, hasn't it? Because in a way, I don't think, um, I think so many of our businesses have grown through this period of time, not just grown online sales. And I know that this has been really important for you as many, as many other small businesses, but also grown in the strength of your business. Because, you know, when would you normally have maybe sent out that email, got that response, built that, built that functionality into your website? And now you're sort of coming out, we're going to talk about reopening shops, but you're sort of coming out the other side, realizing that, you know, when we're pushed and we ask questions or we develop or we have to do things, in a way, it's very, very good for our companies to be put in those positions because, you know, uh, so many of us can get stuck into the day-to-day -day of our companies. Yeah. Would you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And it's and it's been, like, I think for a small business, it's been easier to adapt quickly because you're not, there's not, like, huge levels of people involved. You just do it, you know, so it's... Yeah. 
Um, so actually, we've kind of been able to slip through. You know, I could I could walk to work. I can. I, the social distancing wasn't an issue because there was no one there. You know, so all of that. Yes. We could keep going. Thanks to like your mail and you know that like, that was amazing. Like I was so grateful because they kept us like they literally kept afloat, us, huh? Kept me in business. You know that that was the um, but they kept everything going. Uh, I've got a I've got a couple of questions yeah. um, that are coming in. Winters, so let me read them out. Winters Moon UK. I would love, <laughs> do you know, I would love to know what criteria Molly uses when choosing her products. None, really. I just, it's like, um, it's all a kind of feeling and it's, it's me, really. So. It's you. I think, um, I try not to overlap things. So if I've got one, you know, one designer that I work with that does something really well, then I probably wouldn't buy a similar, you know, as the same thing, Dep like depending. But um, it's just sort of, it's things I like. And I always have a joke with customers because I'm like, oh, there's nothing, it's not very much practical stuff. You know, like it's all kind of, like it, things can be practical, but that's not like the... the, the what you look for. Yeah. Um, but really good, you know, like good design things that are are made to last, that people will keep, that they'll, you know, that they might they'll buy as a gift for somebody that they'll keep forever, you know, like in in certain sort of like gifts and things. And um, yeah, it's it's not like there isn't a, there's not That's... really a good criteria. <laughs> it's just kind of. And, and based on that and, and this question, and I know what um, Winter's Moon UK is trying to ask you, and it's that thing where I spoke to um, uh, a dear a person at Not In The High Street and myself knowing product for the last 15 years, you know, Not In The High Street has 250,000 products and literally product is my, you know, soul. I don't know. So I'll, I'll go to my funeral bed, I think, with still wanting to innovate product or, you know, looking at my casket and saying, why hasn't this been done differently? You know, it's basically it, it within us. And would you say that that's um, been a driving force in your life? You know, has product or looking at things given you delight all your life? Because I think when I look at what you do, which is exceptional, um, people with that eye and that ability to curate is a real, something maybe that you're born with. And would you agree with that? What's been your journey to getting to where we all see your lovely grid, but what's been that journey to get to that beautiful grid? Um, I, I used to design children's clothes. So that's like kids. Right. The kids has always been um and I always wanted to have my own business my own shop really um so that world has been my sort of universe um and then I um sort of I started I started basically collecting I've got a real interest in furniture like mid-century and I started collecting vintage kids chairs and it was just a hobby and they were like miniature versions of like adult classics and I started with that and then I started selling them and that's kind of how I started but I was working full-time doing the the uh, design work and so I never I kind of did that on the side and then I started doing new new products and stuff buying um and I never did clothing because it was a conflict of my day job so that's how I kind of and my interest was in interiors and I think in a in a other life I would have done gone into product design. So like Yes. That's kind of my um I've just I'm really interested in it and especially sort of fifties, sixties like that kind of um, Yeah. So that's and what and what, what and what are those things that you you know when someone you know so you've got someone wanting to be stocked um, obviously but what what are those words that you use when you go ah. Oh, that's definitely right. You know, is it magic? Is it creativity? Is it because, you know, only when we talk about these things, product people talk about these things, can other people almost hear it? Because 
it, there is this, it's a, it's a very difficult thing to describe, isn't it? When you're, when you work out why a product's in your shop, you know, but do you have some words that are about the feeling you feel when you know something's right? If I go to a trade show or I come across something like that, that's kind of, to say I go to a, a trade show and I see someone new that I haven't seen before and it almost stops you. You know, like, and then I feel really excited. So I'll come back and I'll be like, oh, my God. Like, they're, you know, and it's, so it's almost instant, you know, certain things. And I think that that's kind of what I I just go with now is my, like, my gut. So if I feel that sort of... That feeling. Yeah. It's, so. it's a bit like when we dated and, and, and it's that feeling of, you know, um, it's love at first sight, isn't it? What do they say? Yeah, it's three um, seconds, yeah. three seconds when you make up your mind, whether you're going to continue that date or not, or friendship or whatever it is. I think yeah. it's the same with product, isn't it? Yeah, I think, um, uh, yeah, definitely. I think that's, uh, yeah. I've got another question for you. Um, Alexandra um, Truizzi, uh, Truizzi, I'm t it's awful. I, I'm not good at pronouncing things and then sometimes I get a difficult name and I don't mean any disrespect if I say it incorrectly. Tell us what inspires you. Uh, another hard question, right, for someone. Uh, it's so difficult, but what are those things that um, just make your hands go a bit sweaty? You know, that feeling that... <laughs> You're like, oh my gosh, I can't get enough of this. I just, I just really like, I think I love, I do love what I do. And I'm really like, I guess it's part, it's an extension of, of me. You of know, you. like, is a, yeah. And um, I think it's, you know, like, I, I think I get to, I get inspired by the people that I work with. So I, so if I don't do design anymore and I don't want to, but I get to work with creative people and yes. so everybody around me I'm inspired by and that that's yeah. I love seeing, you know, new things and new ideas and people being playful. And I think in the kids especially in the kids' world it's it's like even when I was doing design like there was it's much more playful and creative in, I would say, in children's because you can experiment more than, I, I always, we always sort of found like women's wear and men's wear was quite serious because that made the most money companies and it was kind of the bottom line and we could kind of slip through, you know, and you could be You could have a bit of fun. It didn't have as much of an impact and you could just, so... I don't know if that answers the question. Yeah, but... no, I, you know, it's a really, really hard one. Um, and I've got lots of questions coming in. I just wanted to, before I go to my, those questions, tell me about, um, I don't want to sound too optimistic, but and, and I, I say this and then I think about what I read in, the, in a newspaper about whether we've got anything, second waves coming our way. But it feels like we are coming to another point in this journey. You know, when I think about shedding a tear, shutting the shop, I really felt very encouraged op reopening the shop. How has that been for you? And, and has it been, um, what are your sort of hopes now you're reopening? Is there things that you're going to do differently, you know, and, and potentially people out there thinking, I'm, I'm sort of trying to encourage people to get on the high street. Are the things that you've learned that you would now, you should have done before, if you see what I mean. You know, I know there is things for me that I've learnt, um, that could be staffing or um, those things. What, 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 what have you felt reopening? Um, it was quite a lot. It was quite a lot of work getting the place ready for reopening. So we cleared, you know, like just physically, like we cleared it, and um, and actually that's been really good because I think. I get a tendency to get overexcited and I buy all these different things and then you've got to squeeze them into a really small space. So people come in the shop and they would be like, oh my God, you know, like there's not, it's not minimal. Um, and it's actually felt nice having, because also because I've been more, I've obviously been more cautious about buying. So naturally I've tried to sell through things so we don't have as much stuff and it actually feels so much better in the shop. Like you can mm. see 
people can walk around without knocking something over and getting knocked over by something and um and I think that that's that's been really good for me because it's like actually you know it's okay to sell out things and not have things and I know it's not ideal but I've, I've never got what anyone wants anyway. You know, like, even if I've got a million things. It's, you know, yes. Like, so um, uh, that, that's been good. And then I think, like, I was thinking about this before we spoke, and I think that when the shop was shut, one of the improvements was that we we weren't out. So sometimes, like, I've sort of the last couple of years, I've only got a proper till system and stuff. So it's a bit boring stuff, but, like, the legit barcoding and so you've got one stock system um and i think it's not very good when somebody takes the time to buy something and then you email them and say you don't have it yes so that's something i really want to sort like we'd, we spent a lot of time while we were closed getting like an, a real you know real inventory and it still happens but i'm just trying to have it happen yeah well, I empathise. I empathise because anyone who is thinking about going on the high street, there's all this sort of hidden stuff that goes on because you have inventory. So that means you know you have products in your shop, and then you might have ten people buy that product. Um, where you know there's ten on the the shop floor, five people buy it on the shop floor, ten people buy it online, and suddenly you're minus five. And yeah. actually, it's quite a complicated. It sounds not complicated, but actually it is quite complicated to have one system that works, stock management that works, plus a shop that's open seven days a week um, and an online shop that's open 24 hours, um, seven days a week. So it's, it is, um, it's a complicated thing that doesn't sound that complicated, but it is, isn't it, Molly? Yeah, I mean, up until sort of, a year and a half ago we didn't have anything so this was like basically if we sold something in the shop and I knew I would sort of manage the stock system and then I'd take it off and it was it was terrible like and now at least now it's automatic so we scan something and it takes it off the web like it feeds yeah back. so we've made vast improvements <laughs> but still there's a lot yeah it's kind of a bit of a minefield and um it does my head in a bit so yeah <laughs> yeah it's, it's well, um yeah. we've got questions about your unbelievable photography which is just crazily great they want to know do you take the photographs um it's a mixture so the probably the not so good ones i take <laughs> so it, everything in the shop is just it's on the phone um and then that's that's just me and I take pictures and I've got like some cardboard and I put things on and actually during lockdown I've done more pictures of people's orders um and I've had a few people saying they've been really they've really liked looking at them because they get ideas from them so that's <gasps> um and then there's a couple of people I've worked with that do really nice photos and I've asked them to do pictures for me so they um like uh, my friend Jess was help before lockdown was helping quite a lot so she would come to the shop and take some photos um and she would take things away and do them for me so it's been a bit of a mixture and then another uh, friend Alice we did some photos before just before the shop shut in I'm moving and we went and did them together so it's a bit of a it's a bit of a mixture um but I, I would like to work with more people doing sort of inspiration pictures because I think that would be really, you know, like in a room set, um, that sort of thing. I don't really have time to do. And I and also I, I think there's people that can do it. You know, it's really great to get somebody else. Yeah. I, um, so I, I think that I would prefer to use my own pictures that I've worked with somebody on to 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 met to take. We've done it together, or I've done them, and I do use some brand photos, but I I try and use more of my own imagery where I can. Yeah, 
is what's amazing is that when you look at now sort of the new form and I'm seeing the basket tree who I'm just total right. massive fan of um, who's watching now, you know, uh, her level of photography, you know, there are so many people in our communities that are fantastic at different things or the things that we need aren't there and yeah. actually this sort of new wave of the photo shoot and it does have its place um but potentially things need breaking a bit you know there's a new way of marketing that's actually reaching out to your community a new way of photographing that's reaching out to your community and um and again, just talking to founders when I, you know, lots of people spend a lot of money on photo shoots and professional ones and all these things. And if they put them on Instagram, the difference between the likes between uh, 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 just someone snapping something in their bedroom and it's beautiful light versus a professional photo shoot is actually not the way you think it would go. You know, yeah. everyone likes those authentic pictures. And certainly, I'm not saying just anyone, but I'm saying like the basket tree, you know, people who with style and taste it's amazing if they capture things themselves would you think that this is a good tip for those listening in the small business world to sort of try and break the mold when it comes to these traditional areas i think if things are too like what i found is is actually the, the um when i take a picture just of something in you know something a bit more like just happening that gets more of a response because like you say it just seems a bit more natural and um and the more styled pictures don't necessarily get the lights but i think for me i think that they've got a different place in 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 giving people ideas especially because a lot of um like if it's the interior side of it you're kind of like for me like I use Instagram personally for shopping and I'm moving so I'm looking for ideas and stuff and those pictures are giving me more of a like a picture in my head and then the product pictures you know where you're I think a mixture of the two like for my shop is really good and although some of the inspiration ones don't you know they might not get a lot of likes I think they're important so because and even if I don't use them on social media, I can put them on my product imagery. Um, I can put them on the homepage of the website. So they're kind of, but I do think that the less sort of style, over style stuff, I don't think, I think people get a bit, I, I don't know. I, well, we've it's been more brought up on it, I think. We've been a bit spoilt, haven't we? As, yeah. as, as technology has got better and cameras got better, um, you know, we're very, and we all become, you know, looking for more perfection. And um, we've been brought up on it. And I think one of the things I'm seeing is it's so breaking at the moment. You know, people actually want the real stuff, yeah. the real models, the real, um, you know, a pitch of society as it really is. Um, I mentioned at the... Um, the start um your sort of eye and your style do you think that you're going to when you look at your future um and obviously kids is your sort of passion but do you have aspirations because i, I sometimes feel like founders stay in their lane you know they know what they're doing and they know what they're good at but after a while you know slightly the creative juices start you know rattling around in other areas what, what what do you think for your own brand? and Or do you not believe that? Do you feel that actually once you know what you're doing and you're good at it, you should just get better in that area? I, like, I think that, I think if you keep yourself inspired and sort of, I think it evolves. So things evolve, like all of this that's happened with having to close and stuff, you think of new like things come to you and you just you think of new um new ideas of, of having to shift um at the moment my interest is still in what i do um but i know that people's you know people's interests change often with children's shops um it can be that that people start a business based around having children and that evolves and then their children grow up and they it becomes less relevant yes um but i've sort of come at it as a bit of a different angle because it's been always what i've done in the world that i've been in and my interest um so 
but I had thought I thought about things at different points um but I think some sometimes I thought about oh maybe I'd design a range maybe I'd do this and actually I don't want to grow I don't want to dilute what I do too much I really like working with creative people I don't know in the future but at the moment I don't I think I've got enough that I need to focus on and get good yes how diverse add into it um, yeah. I've got some questions coming in. A really great one from Petrula. And it's one that for anyone who's dealing with products in their business, when you see a product you love, do you also think about its commercial appeal? Because sometimes it's really hard to balance what you love with, is it actually going to sell? Yeah. And sometimes you can be really like, I might love it, but it doesn't mean everybody will. So there's, like some things I feel like I just know. Um, yes. Some things I love it and I'm not sure and then everyone else does and I've only bought a few because I wasn't sure. Um, I think I'm getting better at knowing because I, I guess I've been doing, you know, I've been doing it for 10 years and um, so I've got a bit more confidence in knowing. But yeah, it's not guaranteed that just because you love it. And we had funny, you know, we had funny chats in the shops because I'm like, I love that. And then everyone else is like, oh. Uh, you know like so it's it's yeah our own well yeah. I, I remember i remember launching holly and co's shop and you know you think i know something about products and i would say you know that we are going to have a queue around the corner about that product <laughs> we need to not just buy my sister who buys the products is like i don't think so holly i'm like i'm telling you now double triple that order and still, three years on, we're still selling the product. You know, yes. and funny enough, I wasn't quite right there. <laughs> yes. um, I've got a question here. Uh, well, actually, Gooseberry Fall, really interesting thoughts on photography. I'm currently planning my next photo shoot. So it's given me a lot of food for thought. So I'm really glad that that has, because I think potentially we don't talk enough about photography when actually that's the only thing you're seeing with this powerful medium called social media. Um, Lillian May Studio, I would love to know what the best thing about opening a physical shop was. And actually that, um, Lillian, thank you for asking that because that was also one of my next questions, which is you run a lot of experiences in your shop. So tell me about Lillian's question, what was the best thing about opening? But I would also love to know, do experiences work when creating retail theatre? Just a tiny little bit of background. So before I opened the shop, I did a lot of pop-up shops. And um, so I did like design fairs. So initially with the vintage furniture, then I moved on to do modern design. I did fairs and then I found some empty spaces and did pop-ups. So it was a really good test. Yeah. Um, but when I did them, I did workshops. So we would do, or we'd hold events. And so I did something, the London Design Festival and the Children's Museum in Bethnal Green said we, we want to put something together. So I was back, I mean, this was years ago, but it was about eight or 10 designers. And I approached them all and I said, do you want to do a workshop based around what you do? Um, and it, it was just, it was really enjoyable because it's, it's showcasing their work yes passing it on it's teaching you know it's giving people insight into it it's giving children ideas of something that they might you know provoking ideas interests um and it adds another d dimension to what I, i'm really interested in it it's my sort of background and it also adds another dimension to the shop that's not just um, commercial you know it's not just about selling products so I get to meet the customers I get to work with the designers or the brands yes. um, and well, when we do it like generally it's like the shop's quite small and we just clear the middle table so usually it's before the shop opens and there's eight there's only eight children because that's about yeah. as much space as we've got because you've got then their parents the buggies siblings the buggies, shops um, and buggies. Yeah, there's quite a lot. Um, so that's been good. Now we've got less stuff on the floor. Everyone can get around a bit. Easier. Yes. Um, so I think the best thing about having a physical space, like when I did it online, 
which was a really brilliant way to start. I did it all from my flat. Um, like the flat was a warehouse. Um, my mum and her friends used to come over every day and, and help pack orders. So there was no sort of separation. And I just really wanted to have like a shop. I didn't want to move it into like a warehouse. I wanted to meet people. Like Bring the it to life. And I love like where, because we're quite, you know, we're quite local. Like it's not, like we're not on the main high street. So we've got a lot of regular local customers. And I just, I like that element of it. There's a social element. Um, and you've really got like a, I guess it's like a community of people, you know. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, that's, so it, it just, it adds a completely different dimension that's not just transactional. I think that um, for me, uh, yeah. Well, it's it's this sort of, isn't it? That's this the thing. And um, and I'm going to ask you, um, I know I've taken up your time. I want to ask you one last question. But, you know, running shops and, you know, I, it, it's funny, isn't it? I'm speaking to you. I've spoken to a couple of people who have shops. It's a really an amazing way to bring your brand to life, um, sort of outside of the utilitarian nature of just selling things. You know, it's the place that you take your photographs. It's a place you meet your customers. You have eight kids come in and, get inspired and you know those parents then have an affinity with your shop because all their memories when these kids were little you know come from your magical shop it's it's an amazing thing that physicality in retail does and um and i think it can be underestimated um i just wanted to ask you what would you say has been your lesson through lockdown i i, I think like being able to adapt, I think, um, and then I, I, I think also now I'm, I'm, I'm just being a bit more. I'm going to think a lot more because I know I have to be quite cautious, you know, like as a, because although things got busy online, um, now the, the shop's quiet. So since we've reopened, we're only letting three people in at a time. It's, it's more people that come that want. But they actually, they're not browsing, they come and they buy a lot more, which is, you know, it's good, but um, we're getting less people in. Uh, and online, as, as people have getting more back to every day, it's slowed down. So I'm, I think, uh, I guess we don't know what's to come, really. So it's just trying to think carefully i think carefully i like that and actually no one said that to to actually be con more considerate in our thoughts and as business owners we can be quite quick can't we because yes. we have to be we have to we've got a million things that are on and you know we've just gone and bought something thinking people are going to queue around the corner and then they don't and lots of things that go on in our world isn't there that no one really sees so i think that's such a good piece of advice um thank you so much for joining me today Hi. and honestly your feed your instagram for ev everyone obviously follows you but it really is something very special and and um you know as a product um obsessive person um your eye is um right up there and just well done on everything that you have created because you're really really inspiring and me and the team always talk about you so um thank you so much for joining me today thanks for inviting me and thanks for all the advice you've given while we've been not oh. that amazing Really good, thank so. you so much thank you well i'm now going to summarize you and make you blush so i'll okay. let you go now and um, but thank you so much thank okay. you molly thank you bye. bye well what an amazing lady she is i mean honestly she's you know you're in this profession and um over time you sort of pick up accounts pick up people that really know what they're doing and molly is one of those women who knows what she's doing um what did I pull out of that? Well, one was um, build a business doing what you love. And I know I say that quite often. Maybe it's even my middle name. Um, but actually, she said that it's the business is an extension of herself. And I think that's something that we all need to remember. Very much in corporate worlds, they tell you that that's impossible. Actually, that's a negative um, if you're too in it and you're too in love with it and it's all part of your own personal sort of tapestry. That's absolute, total, I know that their kids may be at home. God, when can I swear again? Um, but it's absolute codswash. 
Codswallop, not Codswash. Um, Molly was originally a children's clothing designer, but she just had grew that brand and she knew that this was her area. Um, trust, I mean, she's saying the right things here. Trust your gut. You know, when you're buying, when you're looking, sourcing, designing, when you have that flicker of love, that thing where someone walks in um, to the shop, not saying that this happened to me lately, um, but it might have, and you think, my goodness me now that is that feeling you've got to have when you look at a product there is something that's got to ignite in yourself um and that's when you know you're onto something um photography is key and i'm so glad we got to speak to, about this today um i don't think i've actually spoken about this enough and I, i'm making a mental note and the team's listening that we must talk about photography in the age of everything being digital, we look at everything. If you haven't got a physical shop, your photography is your physical shop. It's the way someone touches something. It's the way someone tastes something. It's the way someone feels something. All of those words are in one photograph. And so when we don't prioritize our photography, we pay the price. And when I think about Molly's Instagram feed, when I think about her photography, it is absolutely bloody brilliant. And so she knows um, the importance. So do think about that. Think about UGC, user generated content. Think about sending your products out, not just to influencers. No, send it out to people who take a bloody great photograph and ask them if they kept that product, could you use that photograph? I'm can't tell you how much cheaper that is than a full-on photo shoot but as molly said there is this nice mix that you can do a professional photo shoot plus the ugc and actually having that blend is what's right because if you just had ugc it would swing it one way and if you just had professional photography it would swing another way but the mix definitely i've seen that in so many brands it's the mix that makes it powerful um and be considered uh, be considerate and that's what molly has said is her biggest lesson and i've got to say definitely if we can as founders slow down just for one second more build some time into the diary where you're at one with your thoughts and be considerate to how you're feeling, I did a post on it this morning, how you're feeling, but also considerate to the decisions that you are making. Um, and I, I really think that was a fantastic piece of advice from Molly. Um, I have loved, loved doing this. I am on a high today. I've been feeling a bit, um, you know, pants for the last few days. And actually I feel so much better today because I realize how much people like Molly give me energy and hearing founder stories and recording podcasts. So, and also this thing that happens here, all these amazing comments that I get, I read them and it keeps me going. So as ever, thank you so much. Thank you, Del, for allowing me to do these interviews. Today is my 41st interview um, during lockdown. Um, and so it has just been an amazing ride and so, so much love. And thank you, Molly, again, for giving us your time. Um, you're pretty genius. Lots of love.